As a new generation of eco-terrorists blight our lives and threaten to bring the country to a standstill, it is worth remembering that most of their claims are parroted almost daily by much of the media and our elected officials as well. What we're asking for is what all the scientists are asking for, what the United Nations are asking for. And the International Energy Agency have said, we cannot drill any more oil and gas out the ground. Because we seem to be hurtling off a cliff edge of climate devastation. Our journalists and politicians solemnly tell us that they support the aims of groups like Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion whilst weakly condemning their methods, such as the gravity of the climate crisis that befalls us. The climate catastrophe is the biggest threat facing humanity. But are those claims really true? If anybody bothers to actually scrutinise these wild statements, you find more often than not that they are simply rubbish. So get ready as we break down the top five climate lies. Number one, wind power is nine times cheaper than gas. An onshore wind can produce um, power nine times cheaper than, than gas. Nine times cheaper than gas. Nine times cheaper. Nine times cheaper than the cost of gas. In the wake of the recent explosion of the price of natural gas, politicians and campaigners have repeatedly claimed that wind power is nine times cheaper than power produced from gas plants. But where did this idea and claim come from? Initially, the claim was made in an article that appeared on the green billionaire-funded eco-propaganda blog, The Carbon Brief, comparing wholesale electricity prices with strike prices offered by wind power developers. The graph looks like he's got gas prices banged right, but let's look a little closer. For a start, the author, Simon Evans, didn't even bother to change the graph's units from euros to pounds, so he's 15% off right there. Then, he took an abnormally high peak of gas prices above the cost of natural gas from a historic low in 2020, which had peaked for the following reasons. Long-term green policy throughout the EU and UK prohibiting or restricting natural gas exploration and extraction, including fracking. And I'm very proud that you're looking at the person basically stop the fracking industry in this country. Lockdowns have caused gas production to be ramped down. Three, the rising costs of capital for hydrocarbon energy projects caused by, among other things, divestment and ESG our favourite thing in the world. Campaigns aimed at financial institutions and investors causing a collapse in investment over the 2010s. When lockdown ended, this made it difficult to increase production. Four, EU and NATO member states sanctions against Russia, which were disastrous as their green agenda made EU states dependent on Russian energy exports. We interrupt this programme for a message from the President. Germany will become totally dependent on Russian energy if it does not immediately change course. Here in the Western Hemisphere, we are committed to maintaining our independence from the encroachment of expansionist foreign powers. Germany is facing rocketing energy prices and needs to cut its dependence on Russian gas fast. And then we also see industry shutting down production, giving these sky-high energy prices. The Carbon Brief's own funders and its sibling organisations were instrumental in creating some of those problems which caused natural gas prices to spike far above their historical averages. They lobbied hard for policies to close coal and gas production and generation in Europe and the UK whilst proudly boasting of their successes. The true potential cost of gas is much lower in a scenario in which more exploration and extraction have been permitted. Fracking, for example, rather than banned. Yet those gas prices at least have the quality of being real and such charts do show what traders were buying and selling gas for on the European markets, even if for only a few days. However, the strike prices he cited for wind offered by wind farm developers have never been achieved. Offshore wind farm operators have offered extremely low strike prices for power since 2017, driving claims that the costs of the technology were falling. The first of these wind farms were due to start selling power to the grid this year, but rather than committing to the prices they had seemingly agreed to, they simply sold power at the market price. Same price as gas. The Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy meekly complained, accusing the wind farm operators of not acting fairly. In reality, onshore wind is more than twice the long-term cost of gas-fired power, and the cost is going up. Offshore, between three and four times as expensive as gas. In short, the claim that wind is nine times cheaper than gas is nothing more than a ridiculous and despicable lie. Climate lie number two. 
island countries are sinking into the sea. The Maldives is the lowest lying country in the world and the threat from rising seas is imminent. Low-lying island states have become a major symbol of the urgency of global climate talks. In 2009, Mohamed Nasheed, president of the Maldives, held an underwater cabinet meeting as a stunt to highlight what he believed was the perilous situation his country faced ahead of that year's COP meeting in Copenhagen. But is any of this true? The evidence, and we all know how much doomsday cultists hate evidence, gets in the way of ideology, is far less robust than activists claim. A 2021 study of satellite images and a survey of the scientific evidence found that in fact the Maldives and other island states had increased in area in recent decades. Whoops. Despite the constant refrain that the islands will crumble and sink into the sea, no published evidence exists of pervasive erosion at a global scale. Existing studies have been based on small, temporary, sparse samples of islands on a limited number of atolls. There's no evidence that this is happening across the globe at all. In fact, some studies show that the complete opposite. Using satellite imagery, this study looked at land area on 221 atolls in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Between 2000 and 2017, the total land area on these atolls has increased by 61 square kilometres. Yippee! Mostly through land reclamation. Just two of the island states studied showed a loss of area. Since 2000, the Maldives have added 37.5 kilometers squared of land area. I don't even know how much that is, but I'm no mathematician. But I know it's more. A slightly earlier study suggested that due to the nature of the way that they are formed, many islands of this kind may not be vulnerable to sea level rise at all, claiming assumptions about refiling futures under sea level rise may thus be inappropriate. Ooh, inconvenient. Only climate activists would look at the islands getting bigger and tell you they're getting smaller. And in any case, the only thing underwater in the Maldives are the new luxury hotels and restaurants. And despite their sub-aqua theatrics 13 years ago, the Maldivian government can't be too concerned about the climate crisis when they've just added five brand new airports and are planning to develop six more. Climate line number three. Net zero will make your bills cheaper. Many politicians and activists claim that enforcing net zero compliance on households will reduce their energy bills. But retrofitting homes with insulation and heat pumps is not cheap. According to Parliament's Environmental Audit Committee, the current government severely underestimated the costs of making homes compliant with net zero, citing evidence that 19 million British homes will need substantial upgrades costing on average, and wait for it, £18,000 not including heat pump installation. Yes, this mind-bottling figure thrust upon us in the middle of a generational cost of living crisis may even be an underestimation. In a policy experiment run by Kirkley's council, eight council houses were retrofitted to make them net zero compliant. According to the local authority, initial results have shown a reduction in carbon emissions by 50 to 75% saving tenants between £190 and £350 a year on their energy bills. This experiment has been highlighted by the Labour Party in their new policy agenda. Sir Keith Starmer massively inflated the savings, claiming Huddersfield refits had saved residents over a grand on their winter fuel bill. But neither Kia or Kirkley's council had explained how much this retrofitting cost. That was only revealed after an investigation by the Daily Mail newspaper. Retrofitting each house cost a paltry £60,000. An average saving of £250 a year, it would only take 240 years to break even. And retrofitting all of the UK's 1.6 million council houses it would cost £96 billion. Net zero is not going to save you money. Climate lie number four. Storms are getting more frequent and more intense. Texas has increasingly bore the brunt of floods and more intense weather. Every hurricane season it is claimed that storms, hurricanes or tropical cyclones are becoming ever more frequent and intense. The 2021 hurricane so these natural disasters are in part, or at least the effects of them, are in part man-made. And there seems to be evidence that climate change is a part of that at least. The one thing this has finally ended is a discussion about whether or not there's climate change and we should do something about it. It is hard to argue when the visceral power of nature is unleashed, yet these claims have no basis in fact whatsoever. Oops. This data shows zero increase in the frequency of major or minor hurricanes in the Atlantic. Since we can see no increase in the ratio of major hurricanes, we can see that there has been no increase in intensity either. 
The same is sadly true of storms at the global scale. And the measure of accumulated cyclone energy also shows that there is no evidence of a climate change signal. To quote this study, there have been no significant increases in storms in the Atlantic since the US Signal Tracking Corps started tracking hurricanes in 1878. Climate line number five. Climate change is killing people. The existential threat posed by the ravages of climate change. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. And birds falling out of the sky. And pensioners dying before they should. This is just the beginning. Breathtaking, isn't it? Though every death is a tragedy, Natural disasters are one of the least significant mortality risk factors on Earth. But is the problem getting better or worse? Not that the media would ever tell you, but the number of people killed by natural disasters today is a tiny fraction of the number killed 100 years ago, even though the world's population has quadrupled in that time. These pictures are from the Great Flood of 1862, which over 43 days killed over 4,000 people in the west coast of the USA, including over 1% of California's population at the time. Today, that would be 395,000 people. Numbers unimaginable today. This lie is perhaps the most insidious of all, as it is industrial civilization made possible by cheap and abundant energy that protects us from natural disasters. Climate protesters and doomsday cultists would rather see all of that progress end. Therefore, more people would die. And as successive governments cave in to their demands, making energy more expensive, denying developing countries the ability to experience the fruits of progress, the activists are emboldened. And a bleak, desolate future becomes all the more likely. The mainstream media steadfastly refuse to report these climate lies. Instead, they climb into bed with their old chums in the government, hell-bent on scaring us half to death. One day, renewables will catch up with demand and we'll all live in a cleaner, and healthier planet. But in the meantime, let's get fracking, let's be energy self-sufficient, let's be optimistic, hopeful, and build a more prosperous and fertile future for our children. Thank you. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share. Ping!